Hello everyone and welcome to my guide for tips, tricks, and getting started to Pokemon Go. I am going to talk a little bit about cool things that you can do in the game and things you might not know since there's not really a tutorial for it. So the first thing is how to get Pikachu as your starter. When you go into Pokemon Go and you're presented with the choice of Bulbasaur, Pikachu, Charmander, and Squirtle, all you need to do is run away from them over and over and over again and eventually Pikachu will, Pikachu will appear for you and you can catch Pikachu instead. This is useful since Pikachu might be rare in your area or hard to get. Next up is gyms and Pokestops. When you start you're going to see these huge buildings and the large building is the gym and the small two little Pokeball icons are Pokestops. You can spin one of the Pokestops to get Pokeballs and other things. So in addition to being able to spin the Pokestops to get free items such as Pokeballs and other things, gyms will let you battle Pokemon. Now if the gym is lit up and it's blue, that means it's owned by Team Mystic. If it's yellow, Team Instinct. If it's red, Team Valor. If you can't join a gym yet, it's because you're not high enough level and once you reach level 5, you can join a gym, or you can challenge a gym. If the gym is owned by your team color, you can still challenge the gym because if you beat the gym, it'll add prestige to the gym for every single trainer's Pokemon you knock out, which is great because the higher the prestige a gym has, the more reward you get for holding the gym, such as coins. So just try to hold the gym if it's yours, and if not, all you have to do is try to beat the gym, and if you topple over the gym, you can take it over, add your Pokemon to it, and try to keep the gym. I don't recommend putting in your strongest Pokemon because then you can't really use it for other things like challenging other gyms. I recommend putting maybe like your second strongest or kind of like a mid-tier one that you might want to level up and grind on later. So that's about it for gyms and Pokestops. So as you might have noticed, some of the Pokestops have these pink petals falling around them. And you're probably wondering, well, what are these? Well, those pink petals are active lure modules. When a lure module is active, it means there will be more rare Pokemon, more Pokemon that will come to that lure, and it will just be a little bit easier for you to kind of catch Pokemon and level up. And as far as leveling up goes, there is one huge advantage to leveling up, and that would be the Lucky Egg. The Lucky Egg, probably by now is no secret, all you got to do is you get a Lucky Egg, you activate it, and you go to evolve a bunch of your Pokemon. It could be a bunch of duplicate Rattata Rattatas you have, Pidgeys and Pidgeotos, or pretty much anything else. It'll help you gain tons of experience very quickly and go up levels. And as you might have guessed by now, leveling will give you a couple rewards. So this level chart that you're about to see pretty much shows you everything you need to know for levels. The milestones are 5, which you can go to gyms, 8, which you get berries, which you can throw at Pokemon to make them easier to catch, 10, you get super potions, 12, great balls, 15, hyper potions, and then 20, finally you get ultra balls. And if you're past level 20, well, then you probably don't really need to be watching this video. Next up are medals. Occasionally you'll get a medal for some milestone. Sometimes it'll be for catching a certain amount of Pokemon. Sometimes it'll be for going to a certain number of Pokestops. Last thing I'm finally going to cover is combat power and just general things about Pokemon. While I'm doing that, you're just going to kind of notice some of my Pokemon in the background that I've caught and named. Um, so combat power is really important. Whenever you get a Pokemon with a high base combat power and it's something like a Bulbasaur, it's better than finding a wild Ivysaur or wild uh, Arbok because when you evolve up from something that has a really high base combat power, it's going to be much, much, much stronger in the long run. So like this Arbok was a wild one I caught. If I were to evolve an Ekans that they probably had 400 combat power, it would be a lot stronger than the 809 combat power, and I wouldn't have to waste as much Stardust leveling them up. Instead, I would only use Candy, which is good because Stardust, you don't really get as much of compared to Candy, because every time you catch a Pokemon, you get three Candy instead of just 100 Stardust. 
The other great thing about uh, combat power, combat points, whatever you want to call them, is the higher level you get, the better chance you have of finding Pokemon with stronger combat power, stronger combat points. So a lot of the time I would kind of wait on evolving things or hold off on evolving things until I'm higher level so I can just get a much stronger Pokemon in the long run because I made the mistake of getting Eradicate earlier and powering it up when I turned like level 10, level 15, I could just evolve one it would be three times as strong and I basically wasted a bunch of time in Stardust. So that's why you might want to hold off on leveling things up to try to challenge gyms and things like that. It'll just be better if you wait in the long run. In addition to some of the capture power stuff, I'm going to go on a quick side note and say you guys might have noticed that I have a Vaporeon and Flareon and later on you're going to see my Jolteon and that's because I discovered a neat little trick that reminded me of something from the anime back in the day. If you name your Eevee Sparky before evolving it, it becomes a Jolteon. Rainer, it'll become a Vaporeon. And Pyro, it'll become a Flareon. This worked for me every time. I don't know if it's worked for other people, but for me it worked every time. So that's just a neat little trick I thought I should mention since while I was narrating it just kind of went by my Vaporeon. I said, well, other people might have gotten tired of the random number generator luck that they've been experiencing when trying to evolve their Eevee into whatever desired type they had. So speaking of types, um, battling gems and things like that, type weaknesses, type advantages, same as there are in most Pokemon games. If you're having trouble with that, you can go and type into Google Pokemon type chart, Pokemon type advantage, Pokemon weakness chart, and it might just give you a little bit of insight into that. Um, going through my Pokemon here, you can see that some of them have one attack that is one type for their normal attack and one attack that is another type for their special attack. For those of you that are saying, what's the special attack? That'll be the secondary attack, like on that Butterfree single beam. And the second attack charges up. And whenever one of the bars, one of the blue bars is lit up, you can hold down and it'll do that secondary special attack. So having a different typed primary attack from your secondary attack can be really useful. Like Bug Buzz on my Sarah, my Venomoth, is a bug attack, but it also has a psychic attack. That way it can potentially do more damage against two different types of Pokemon and not always be stuck being not very effective. So having different types of attack, just really helpful, good little tip. Uh, in addition to that the evolution for some Pokemon takes more candy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because if it takes maybe a hundred candy to get to a Venusaur, it means you're going to get all the all the uh, capture, well, all the combat points uh, from each level going up basically. So if I'm spending a hundred candy on, say, my Weeping Bell, that Victory Bell is probably going to be really 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 strong so get one with a high base power evolve once evolve twice you probably will never have to power it up unless you run into like maybe the hardest gym in the world because a lot of uh, wild evolutions of Pokemon are not as strong as ones that you evolve up from base like I found a Beedrill it only had 90 combat power but this one that I evolved up from a Kakuna of a Kakuna I found had 210 combat power so or combat points whatever you want to call it you guys so just keep evolving up and train up and that's the easiest way to get strong Pokemon the last thing I need to mention is eggs there are 2k eggs 5k eggs and 10k eggs they all hatch into different things and you just gotta walk around to hatch them there's really no getting around it uh, here's just a simple chart that shows you what comes out of each type of egg 2k nothing really that special 5k some cool stuff and 10k you got some really awesome really sweet things and another thing to note is out of eggs you actually will get 20 candy from the pokemon you evolve most of the time which is really great for when you hatch like three 10k eggs and you get three kabutos you can just evolve it into kabutops just like that and then finally last thing easiest thing you can go to a pokemon you might have duplicates of 
You can click it, scroll down, hit transfer, and you'll be able to trade that weak Pokemon in for one extra candy. It's not a lot of candy, but hey, it still helps with evolutions. And that's pretty much it for my tips and tricks. If there's anything I missed to mention or you think I should mention in my next video, please leave a comment down below. And thank you very much for watching my video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you want.